Hello everyone and welcome to Forces 1 Part 1. Uh, this is going to be on Lesson 4, which is on Work Done. So before we begin, you will need your calculators today, um, and that's just because we're going to be doing a bit of calculations. This is going to be a bit of a practice lesson. Um, once I show you the equation that you're going to be using, um, you need to be able to memorize it and be able to apply it to uh, questions um, that you'll see in your GCSEs as well. And with always, there's a do now, so eight questions. Um, go ahead and pause the video and click play again when you are done answering the questions. Perfect. Um, so here we go. Um, so for numbers one and two, I put a little bit more than two uh, examples just in case that you put something there that maybe um, you're not quite sure. So temperature, speed, and mass, those are all good scalars. Um, force, acceleration, velocity, these are all vectors. Uh, same thing with number four. Um, those are the three non-contact forces that we talked about in previous lessons. So please make sure that you have all the correct answers on there and we'll get moving. So today we're talking about work. All right, now we're not really talking about you know the place that you go to earn money or how you exercise. Work is more defined as the amount of energy um, that's involved when you're moving something. Okay, so this equation that we're going to be learning today, um, you won't be given a, given it on the physics equation sheet, so you do need to memorize it. So on the first page here. Um, we have a paragraph with a bunch of blanks. So we're going to read through this, um, make some annotations as we go along. So get ready with your highlighter, please. All right, so it says that work is the energy transferred whenever a force moves an object through a distance. Okay, so we're going to highlight that there because that's the definition of work. It's energy transferred, all right, when you have a force, all right, and we know that force is a vector, um, moves an object through a distance. So it says lift your pencil case, but if you don't have one, you can lift your folder or anything like that on your desk. Um, what is the energy gained by the pencil case when you lift it into the air? Okay, so that first line there should be with gravitational potential energy. All right, and then the next part asks, well, can we write an expression for that energy? So According to the definition of work, work is whenever a force moves an object through a distance. So the three factors or the three variables that we have is work, force, and distance. So we can actually make an equation that says W equals F times S. Now you may be thinking, well, S is not distance, right? Usually when we say distance in an equation, we use a lowercase d. Um, and that's because we're not actually using... Um, distance distance we're actually using displacement distance all right so um, hopefully you remember that the actual distance is a scalar um, but when we talk about displacement displacement is a vector because it has a direction attached to it okay so actually it means that force does work on an object when a force causes displacement of it all right so um, I have the the variables there, W equals F times S, um, but it stands for work done equals force times displacement. So make sure that you understand that um, it is F times S. You may see in some um, books, if you do your own research on YouTube or on certain websites that you do uh, revision on, you might see the equation W equals F times D. Um, to be honest, not really too picky about it, as long as you know that whatever comes after the F, so F times S or D is distance, right? It's the amount of um, space that it has moved. I just like to use displacement because um, it does specify in which direction that goes, all right? So just don't forget that. <clears throat> so moving along, it says the first part of this expression is the weight, which is equal to the force needed to lift an object at a steady speed. So even though it says F, right? We know that weight is actually a force that is brought down due to gravity. So if you are given a weight, you can actually still use that as your force because they're both measured in newtons, all right? So force is measured in newtons, weights is also measured in newtons. You can actually um, mix and match those. Um, that, be that being said, the W that's in this equation right now, W equals F times S, um, a capital W stands for work, and a lowercase w stands for weight. All right, so don't get those two mixed up, please. I know they look very, very similar. 
The second part depends on the distance moved, and this is an example of work being done. So if you push your folder or your pencil case across the surface of the desk, um, there's another force that it has to overcome in order to be moved, and that force should be friction. Okay. Um, as you know, in order to move something, you have to account for, well, you know, the mass, the weight, all that stuff. Um, but there are additional forces that are attached onto it because you have to overcome that friction. And if the friction is too high, you won't be able to move it. Okay. So sometimes you might actually be strong enough to move a certain weight, um, but due to the friction that it's on or the object, um, you might not be able to move it. So what are the energy stores that are transferred to the pencil case? And that's going to be um, kinetic and thermal. And I just wanted to mention here, <clears throat> sorry, the more friction there is, the more work that is done to move the object. And that should make sense because um, you're moving your pencil case across the desk right now. But if you try to move the pencil case across a carpet right, or a rug, it's going to be much harder because there is more friction, okay? Um, and so the kinetic should make sense because you are moving it across the desk, right? Um, the thermal energy comes from the friction because when there is friction, there's always going to be a form of uh, heat energy coming out from it, okay? Um, below that paragraph, you have um, two checkpoint questions, and these are generally quite simple. Um, but if you want to quickly pause the video and just answer these, it should take about 30 seconds to a minute, um, go ahead and do that. Right. So the first question asks, well, what does it mean if a force is said to do work? Okay. If I said you did work on this object, right? Um, doesn't necessarily mean that you earned money from it or, you know, you're going to work. Um, it just means that you caused that object to move. A certain distance as a result of a form of energy transfer. Okay, so generally, ninety percent of the time when we say we do work, it'll mean that we actually moved an object, which means that it turned into kinetic energy. That's probably the most common one that you'll find. Um, the second question asks, well, what occurs when work is done against frictional forces? So when you are pushing something um, against a frictional force, right? What are what what would you see as a result? of that. And the answer to that one should be uh, a rise in temperature. Because there is frictional force, there is going to be heat. And obviously, if there's heat, there's going to be a rise in temperature. Okay, Not a lot, depending on the object, but um, you get what I mean. So now we get to the actual equation. All right, so <clears throat> what I'm going to have you do is highlight um, the main part of it, which is work done equals force times distance. So like I said, um, it is distance, but I would like you to say displacement um, because it does specify along there. It says moved along the line of action of the force. So whatever direction that the force is moving in, that's going to be the direction of your distance. And if it's direction of distance included, then it's displacement. And you have W equals F times S. Um, later on, we're going to be learning about rearranging this equation. So you should be able to get uh, two more equations out of this. All right? And if you know the triangle method, we'll, we'll be reviewing that as well. <clears throat> the other thing that you must, must know um, whenever you learn a new equation are the units. Okay, So work is measured in joules. All right. Now you might remember that energy was also measured in joules as well. So these two are actually quite interchangeable. If you have energy performed, all right, or you have some form of energy, then there is work involved. Okay. Or you can use energy as work. And you'll you'll know that uh, later on when we actually do some practice problems because um, if you're given a value in joules, you can use it for work or for energy. Okay. And the same also applies to force. So hopefully you remember that force is always measured in newtons. And like I said, your weight is a force that brings you down. So weight and force are both both measured in newtons. So you can actually use um, a weight instead of uh, force. Okay. <clears throat> and the last one um, is distance or displacement, uh, which is denoted by the letter S, uh, which is measured in meters. Okay, so just make sure that when you are <clears throat> writing out this equation that you do know what units that you are writing. Um, I can't say for sure, um, but most of the time on your GCSEs, you will be given 
Um, if, it's, if it's asking for a calculation, it'll tell you at the very end, it'll have a line for the answer, and then it'll tell you the units that it should be in. So um, knowing your units is actually a big help because it could lead to a clue as to what you're trying to solve if you're confused, right, um, after you read the question. So just make sure that you know what units you're working with and what you can replace and use instead of. Um, the last checkpoint question just asks, well, what, what distance must be used when calculating work done? And that's just the distance that the object travels plus the direction. <clears throat> last thing that you're going to make an annotation on on the side here is that you always, always must convert to SI units before your calculations. This is really, really important because um, if you do not change the SI units, then you will be given the wrong answer. <clears throat> okay. So, for instance, if you're given a measurement in centimeters, you always have to convert it to meters, and vice versa. If you're given, like, kilometers, you have to change it to meters as well. Um, with energy, or, or sorry, with work and force, um, the most common ways that they give you um, a question where you need to do conversions is they'll give you something like kilonewtons or kilojoules, right? Because sometimes um, certain machines do tremendous amounts of work. And so to make it fit, they might tell you, you know, a thousand kilojoules, right? And you need to know how to convert that into just joules and just newtons. Um, so hopefully this comes almost as second nature to you because um, you should just think, well, how many meters are there in a kilometer, right? Um, so if you're going from kilojoules to just joules, then you multiply it by a thousand, all right? Okay, on the next page there, you have one little note there that says one joule of work is done when a force of one newton causes a displacement of one meter. All right, now this is um, a little bit of extra information, but basically it's just saying that one joule, right, a joule is equal to a newton meter. And you can tell that because a newton meter are, or sorry, the newton and the meter are both units for force and distance. Okay, and sometimes it does help you to understand that one joule is one newton meter. Um, in the rare case where they give you one newton meter as the units in the in the question, and you have to figure out in your head that oh, that means one joule. Okay, very rare that that happens, but it does help you. Um, and like I said before, knowing the units sometimes gives you a clue as to how to answer certain questions. Um, so the checkpoint question is just asking that under what circumstance is one joule of work done? And that is when a force acts on a body and it displaces it by one meter um, and you only used one newton. So this is extremely rare. Um, when you have one newton of force, it moves at one meter, then you have done one joule of work. Okay. Right, so as I mentioned before, you need to know how to rearrange the equation. So you have um, these two together. Right, so you should be able to. I, I don't really like these uh, divide signs. I like to usually put it over something. So the other two equations that you should get from this is force equals work done over distance, um, as well as distance equals work done divided by force. Okay, so either one, um, whichever way looks more comfortable to you, you can do that. Um, and I did say before that I will be showing you the triangle method. Now, if you're comfortable with using the triangle method and that's the way that you understand it then go ahead and use that. Um, in, other word, in other case, if you can memorize W equals F times S and just rearrange that, then I strongly, strongly suggest that you do it that way because the triangle method um, is a double-edged sword. It makes it much easier to understand how to rearrange an equation, but at the same time, you have to memorize um, in which, like where the variables go in that triangle. So if, if it was up to me, I would strongly recommend that you learn how to rearrange equations um, and just memorize one of them, all right? Um, if you forgot how to use the triangle method, it's quite simple. You just have to cover up um, whatever variable that you don't know. So let's say, for example, that a question asks you, um, what is the displacement if this much work is done and this much force is applied? Then what you would do is you would write S equals, right? Cover up your S. And then look at the uh, look at the position of W and F. So since W is over F, um, then you would write S equals W divided by F. All right. And the same thing applies if you don't know your force. Um, but if you don't know your work, then you cover up work, and what you have would be force times distance because they're both along the bottom of the triangle. Okay. 
Right, so let's get on to some practice problems. I'm going to do the first one with you, um, and then you should be able to do two, three, and four together. Okay, um, you can do it as a class, you can do it individually, uh, whatever one works for you. So um, I'm going to show you um, a method I've taught to many, many students, and that is when in physics, sometimes it's really difficult to you know organize all your thoughts. So my recommendation, and I again I strongly recommend this, is whenever you're given a problem with numbers in it, I would strongly recommend highlighting or underlining those questions and then organizing them into, well, what is this piece of information given to me? So if it says a force of 12 newtons, then you should be writing F equals 12 newtons. And then if it says it moves an object a distance of five meters, then your displacement was five meters. So this organizes your thoughts and you are given that equation, right? You know that equation W equals F times S. So you're gonna write your equation, right? W equals F times S. And uh, a way that you can do this is basically just write <clears throat> whatever you're looking for. So if it's asking how much work, start off with W equals and then figure out the rest of the equation. Okay. Um, the rest of it should come quite simply because all you're doing now is substituting the numbers in the variables that they stand for. So force is 12 and displacement is 5. And when you put that in your calculator, you should get 60. Um, Please, please, please do not forget the units, okay? Um, sometimes on GCSEs, they will require, they won't give you any information at all in terms of, well, what's the units you're solving for? And so you might be able to earn a point for that. For a question like number one, most likely you'll be awarded two points for that um, because you get one point for choosing the correct formula um, and then you get another point for substituting the numbers correctly, all right? Um, I'll let you pause the video in a second here. Um, before you get started, please make sure that you know that number 2 and 3 gives you 10 kilonewtons of force and 2.5 kilojoules of energy. So because they're not in SI units, please convert them before you use those numbers. All right, so pause the video and try numbers 2, 3, and 4. Perfect. So let's move on to number two. Again, if you find it helpful that you underline or highlight the numbers, okay, do that. Um, but number two, uh, if you should know that force is 10,000 newtons, so all you had to do was multiply it by 1,000, and your displacement was already a meter, so you don't need to do anything with that. Same thing, same equation, W equals F times S, and so substitute the numbers, and you should get 6 million joules. All right. Number three, Box falls 5 meters, losing 2.5 kilojoules of energy. What is the weight of the box? So here is, well, it gives you the hint. The weight is the force, right? So first of all, you're going to have to rearrange the equation. But before we do that, let's figure out what information is given to us. So we have displacement, which is 5 meters, and we have um, the work, which is 2.5 kilojoules, or if you converted it, you should have gotten 2,500 um, joules. Um, with the equation, you should start off with force equals, all right, because weight is force, and by rearranging that equation, you should have gotten work divided by distance. So then if you substitute the numbers, you get 2,500 divided by 5, and when you put that in your calculators, you get 500 newtons. Okay. Again, don't forget the units. <clears throat> And the last one here is quite simple. A motor uses 100 joules of energy to lift the mass one meter. So same thing, you have one meter as your displacement and 100 joules as your work. No need for conversions there. And you're using the exact same formula, force equals work divided by distance. And you should get an easy answer of 100 newtons. Okay? So um, if you can please make sure that you have all the correct answers on there, do not um, go ahead until you have all the work displayed, all right? You will not get points on assessments and GCSEs if you just put the answer. You need to show your work. Right, on the next page, um, you have a chart, four rows, and this is just practicing figuring out how to use um, your, excuse me, how to use um, rearranging the equations, okay? So on the top there, if it helps, um, you can put down the symbol that it re represents. So force would be F, distance moves would be S, and work done would be capital W, right? If it helps you to do that, go ahead. Um, but really, this is just figuring out, well, 
do you have to multiply it? Do you have to divide it? If you're dividing it, what do you divide the numbers by? Which one goes on top? Which one goes on bottom? All right, so pause the video really quickly. This should only take you a couple minutes, um, but go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm just going to go through the answers really quickly. Um, so the first one would be force times displacement. So you do 150 times 1.2, and that should give you 180. Uh, next one, you are doing work divided by force. Okay, so 600 divided by 20 would be 30. Next one is work divided by distance. All right, so 90 divided by 1.5 is 60. And the last one, you need to do 20 multiplied by 0 0.8 first um, before you, <clears throat> sorry, multiply force times whatever it is came out from for displacement. And that should give you 800. All right. So make sure you have those answers before we move along. All right, so we're moving into some exam questions here. And numbers 1, 2, and 3 are technically all the same, part of the same problem. All right, they all refer to the same situation, which is a power lifter who weight, uh, lifts a weight um, from the floor. So let's work on this together. Again, you need to show your work. Um, but make sure that you understand what we're doing before you move on, okay? So let's read the question. A power lifter lifts a 180 kilogram bar from the floor to above his head, and the gravitational field strength that he's in is 10 newtons per kilogram. And it says calculate the weight of the bar, worth two points. So the first problem that we're met with is we're not actually using work, are we? Um, let's figure out what's given to us in terms of information, all right? So um, we know that 180 kilograms is mass, and the 10 newtons per kilogram is actually gravitational field strength. So that was denoted um, in the previous lesson by a lowercase g. Remember that, you know, if you're on different planets, your g value will be different, okay, depending on how much, how strong the gravity is on that planet. So it looks like he's working out on Earth right now because Earth has um, a G value of 10 or 9.8. And um, in the do now, you were asked, well, what's the um, equation for weight? All right. So hopefully you remember that the equation is W equals M times G. So all you had to do was multiply 180 by 10, and that should give you 1,800 newtons. Okay. Right, number two is where most students go uh, a little bit confused because, well, I feel like I don't have enough information. So in the question, it says the power lifter uses a constant force to lift the bar 2.1 meters. Um, so if you had just question two by itself, you would think, well, this question is impossible because I don't have any other more information other than 2.1. But as I said before, questions one, two, and three all work off of the same situation. So you actually have quite a bit of information here. You have mass and gravity, you have displacement, and you have your weight, which you uh, solved from question one. So um, the question is asking, well, what is the work done? So you should know your work formula, W equals F times S, right? Um, sorry, that should be a capital F right there. And um, you know your force, because force is also weight. They're both measured in newtons. And now you have your displacement, which is 2.1. So all you have to do is multiply 1,800 by 2.1. And you get 30. Um, sorry, that should be 37. Uh, sorry, 3,780 joules. Okay, My apologies for the typo. And number three, at the end of the lift, so um, you can see in the diagram there, he has the weight right above his head. The power lifter holds the bar stationary above his head for two seconds. How much work does the power lifter do on the bar during these two seconds? So now you have another piece of information, which is time. You have two seconds. And it's asking, well, how much work does he do for those two seconds that he has the bar over his head? Okay. Um, I'll give you a second to think about it, okay? And hopefully you came to the same conclusion as I did, that he actually did no work at all, all right? And if you're confused, all right, think back to what the equation says. It says work equals force times distance, all right? And it's asking, how much work did he do for those specific two seconds where he holds it over his head? 
And so the reason why he does no work at all is because the bar is stationary. Okay, so it's not being moved. He did move it up 2.1 meters, but that was before the two seconds, right? It's at, the question is asking specifically, well, for those two seconds, how much work did he do? Okay, and since the bar did not move for those two seconds, then he did no work at all. All right. Okay, number four. Um, so on the next page here, it is going to get slightly more difficult. Um, so please make sure that you are following along. Um, when we get to the ski uh, ski lift um, question, it's going to get a little bit more complicated. But number four is a standalone question, um, and it's quite wordy. But this is meant to kind of trick you. So I said the diagram shows a builder using a plank to help load rubble into a skip, and the builder uses a force of 220 newtons. So there's our first number number there. Um, to push the wheelbarrow up the plank, use the information from the diagram to calculate the work done to push the wheelbarrow up the plank to the skip and show clearly how you work out your answer. Okay, So you're going to be using that same formula, W equals F times S, but now you're stuck with a problem. Now you're given two, plus two numbers, right, 1.1 meters and 2.6 meters on the diagram there, um, and you're thinking, well, which number do I use? Okay. Um, don't ever get confused by this because sometimes GCSEs will give you more numbers than you actually use and this is an attempt to kind of trick you, okay? Um, so in this scenario, we are going to actually use 2.6 and the reason for that is because he did not lift the rubble straight up vertically 1.1 meters. It says that he pushed the wheelbarrow up the plank. Okay, so the amount of work that he did or the distance that we're looking at is actually the distance that he traveled up the plank. Okay, so if you put that in your calculators, you would only have to do um, force times displacement, which is 220 times 2.6. And that gives you a value of 572 joules. Right. So again, I apologize, that should be a capital F in there. All right, number five, six, seven, eight, and nine are actually all part of the same problem, same scenario, where there is a chairlift who carry that carries two skiers, Greg and Jill, to the top of a ski slope. And it tells you the weight. Greg weighs 700 newtons and Jill weighs 500 newtons. And number five right now is just worth one point because the question is asking, we'll write down the equation that links distance moved, force applied, and work done. So this one should be fairly simple. Um, it should just be work equals force times displacement. Okay, so you get one point for just writing down the equation, uh, which helps because what you're supposed to do is memorize that equation anyways. Right? Um, the other thing from this question before I move on to the next slide is that hopefully um, you don't forget that you have information given to you, all right? You have 700 newtons and 500 newtons. So I'm going to keep that on the next slide. All right, so you can see in the top left corner here that I've put uh, Greg weighs 700 newtons, Jill weighs 500 newtons. Um, so that should help you kind of remember well, what, are, what are we working with here. All right, so number six um, asks, calculate the work done to lift Jill and Greg, sorry, Greg and Jill, through a vertical height of 200 meters. Show clearly how you worked out your answer and give the units. Um, so this one, you're using the form formula you just wrote in question five. Um, but before you do that, you have to realize that it's asking, calculate the work done to lift Greg and Jill through the height. Okay, so you're using the same formula, W equals F times S, but you're going to write down um, well, it's lifting both of them up, so you can't really do just 700 or just 500. You have to add them together, okay? And that should make sense because if you look, or if you think about a regular ski chair lift, it usually carries more than one person. So um, all you have to do is add those two up together, and you will get a value of 240,000 joules. All right, so that's your energy right there. Uh, number seven is going to be quite difficult because you probably don't remember the power equation. And that's because number seven is asking, well, the chair takes five minutes to move from the bottom to the top of the ski slope. Calculate the power required to lift Greg and Jill to the top of the ski slope. Um, so I'm going to give you the power equation first, and then you can pause the video and solve it for yourself. So there's your equation, power equals work divided by time. Um, but I'll give you a hint here before you start going on, and that is that time has to be measured in seconds. So go ahead and pause the video and solve that for you guys. Right, 
Um, so if you converted it correctly, then you should have gotten 300 seconds for your time and your work you have already um, calculated in your previous question, which is 240,000. And when you put that in your calculator, uh, you should get 800 capital W, which stands for watts. Okay, so it used 800 watts to move Greg and Jill um, up that height of 200 meters. <clears throat> Now, number eight, I'm going to do some explaining for number eight because it is a little bit tricky to understand. It says the chairlift is driven by an electric motor. Why would the power output that you answered in question seven, why would that have to be more um, if this is supposed to work? Okay. Now, you'll notice on the left of question eight that I've drawn a right angle triangle and labeled the A, B, and C. And you should remember this because um, we learned about Pythagoras theorem uh, last week. Okay, or um, in the previous lesson. And um, what you have to know about right angle triangles is that whatever the slanted side is, okay, so in this case it would be C, the side that is slanted like that is always, always going to be the longest side in a right angle triangle. And this is true. It doesn't matter what right angle triangle you're drawing, okay? It can be a really tall one, it can be a really wide one, or just massive in, in, in general, but that C side um, will always be the longest. Okay. Now, why am I telling you this? Okay. In question six, it says calculate the work done to lift Greg and Jill through a vertical height of 200 meters. So that work that you calculated that says 240,000 joules is actually the work done to lift them up 200 meters. It's not the side that says C. What you calculated was the work that's done to move them up side A. Okay. And so if you think about it, the, um, because we're talking about work, if the displacement is different, all right, so A should be 200 meters. C, you're not quite sure, but you know for a fact, because it's the longest side of the right angle triangle, C is going to be larger than A, okay? So it could be 250 meters, it can be 300 meters. Either way, it's gonna have more work, work done, and if there's more work done, then there needs to be more power involved, and that's your answer to number A, all right? The distance of the slope would be longer than 200 meters. All right, we're talking about a ski slope here. And since there's more distance, the more work uh, which is required, which means more power that's needed to lift them up. So that's number eight for you there. Uh, number nine, on the other hand, should be quite easy. It says, uh, complete the following sentence. When the ski lift is working, what type of energy is supplied to the motor? All right, you need electrical energy or electric energy, and is usefully transferred from gravitation, or sorry, transferred to gravitational what energy? And hopefully you know that that is potential, okay? All right, so that is the entirety of the lesson. The last thing you are doing is a knowledge chart, okay? Um, so go ahead and pause the video. There are 13 questions. Um, some of them towards the end will be a little bit more about energy transfer stores. Um, so you do need to remember that, obviously. So go ahead and pause the video, answer those questions, and I will show you the answers in a second here. Perfect. So here are your answers. Um, make sure that you have all the correct ones um, put down or mark them incorrect and put the right answer if you did. Ticks if you got them right. And that is it. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next lesson.